Okay, good morning learners. Today we want to look at the introduction to food and beverage control. And uh, under food and beverage control, we are going to look at the meaning. We look at the sectors of food and beverage outlets. We look at the objectives and also look at the problems of food and beverage control. So, we are going to start by definition of terms. And the first term that we are going to define which is our control. Because if you look at this word, that is food. Food, you know what is food? Any item that is consumed for our growth. Beverage, they are drinks and they are classified into two ways. We have the alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. So we have the control. And control, it is an element, which means it is an many items in the management. So it is among the uh, management aspects. Where in the management there is coordinating, there is controlling, there is organizing. So we look at the control, it is an element of the managerial aspect that involves, it is an element of managerial task and involves measurement and correction of the purpose of subordinate to make sure that the objectives of the entire business and entire price and plan desired to attain them are achieved efficiently and economically. So that is what is control. So we define what is food and beverage control. Food and beverage, beverage control. What is food and beverage control? It is a process. A process you have to note that. It is a process that monitors the movement of food products from the time they are purchased to the time they are consumed by the guests. Why do we say it is a process? Because it starts from you do the menu planning, after doing the menu planning, you do a requisition, after doing the requisition, you have to uh, write a purchase order, which is followed by purchasing, receiving. Storage, issuing, then there is preparation, production, and finally there is selling. So it is a process that monitors the, move, the movement of food from the time they are purchased to the time they are consumed by the guest. So there is another definition for food and beverage control, which we say is the guidance and regulation of cost and revenue of operating the catering activity in hotels restaurant, hospitals, schools, employee, restaurants, and other establishments. The third definition is, it is a process of analyzing whether actions are being taken as planned and taking corrective action to make them conform to the planning. So it is upon you to choose which definition you are going to choose to define food and beverage control. So. After looking at we look at the sectors of food and beverage control. Sectors of food and beverage outlets. Beverage outlets. Sectors of food and beverage outlets. They are classified into two categories. We have the commercial uh, catering and we have the welfare. Catering establishments. So we'll have it classified into two categories where we have the commercial and we also have the welfare catering establishments. So the commercial catering are also called the primary. The, the number name is the primary catering establishment, the other name for this is secondary. Secondary catering assumptions. Why we call them commercial? We call them commercial because their main aim is to make profits and provide services to the guests. And uh, we have welfare or the secondary catering assumptions. These are there to provide welfare services to the customers or to the clients or the, to the student. So, an example of the commercial. Catering establishment is the hotel. Here we want to define what is hotel. Hotel, it is an establishment that provides food and beverage and accommodation. 
and the restaurant, it is an establishment that only provides food and beverage. So you have to know the difference between the hotel and the restaurant. For secondary or the welfare catering uh, establishment, an example is the institution canteen. In the institution canteen, you find that the food that is offered in the institution canteen it is cheaper compared to what you are going to buy from the hotel because the welfare are, are providing welfare services to the customers. Now, having looked at the sectors of food and beverage control, which we are going to do more research on it, we want to look at the objectives of food and beverage control. Objectives of food and beverage control. Objectives of food and beverage control. Objectives are the same as hymns. Why we need to do food and beverage control? Number one, we need to do it for income and expenditure analysis. Income and expenditure analysis. Income and expenditure analysis. When you talk about income, income is what you earn. For example, when you are employed, you will expect an income at the end of the month. So this is the income, the profit that establishment gets. Expenditure, it is what we spend as the establishment. And at least an income and expenditure analysis, what the food and beverage controller will be looking, will be looking at the sales of food and beverage. How did we sell our sales, and food, uh, sales of food and beverage? We also look at the average spending power per customer. How much is the customer willing to spend? We also look at the number of customers expected. Did we serve the number of customers that we are expecting to sell to them? So we also look at the food and beverage portion cost. And the last thing that we are going to look there is the departmental food and beverage cost. So that is the first objective of food and beverage control income and expenditure analysis. Number two, we look at pricing and quotation. Pricing and quotation. Pricing and quotation. When we're looking at pricing and quotation, you know recently, uh, recently we are having outside catering establishments where we are doing the budgeting, we are doing the weddings, you take food there. So you need to be able to quote how much are you going to charge. Because if you don't know what you're going to charge for your outside catering event, it means you don't know what you are doing. So you need to be able to quote how much are you going to serve and also you give that person a quotation so that they can do a comparison with different establishments. So another objective is pricing and quotation. The third objective of food and beverage control is prevention of waste. Prevention of waste. What do we mean by prevention of waste? We know that food is perishable in both raw and in cooked form. So you need to prevent the waste. Prevention of waste. Another thing is number four, objective of food and beverage control is establishment, establishment, and maintenance of standards. Establishment and maintenance of standards. Here, establishment and maintenance of salary, we'll be looking at something we call SPO. The SOP, these are standard operational procedures. When each employee is employed in a certain environment, they are given these standard operational procedures to know what are duties you are supposed to do. When you wake up and you come in that establishment, what are you supposed to do in that day? So, such a that you don't. Uh, the supervisors, they will not overwork you or you will not leave a task which is not attended so that you can be able to answer if there is found a, a mistake. Another thing, number five, is prevention of fraud. Prevention of, of fraud. 
prevention of fraud. Fraud means risk. So we are preventing fraud. So how do the customers take from the establishment? Customers take from the establishment, for example, a customer is hidden and the delivery team walk away from without paying for the food they have totally consumed. So you see customer walking away, making a phone call, and they're walking away. And they know that they are not paid. If you're not keen, that customers will walk away and they'll not pay for that food. Another way that customers steal from the establishment is unjustifying or claiming that the food that they have totally consumed was not pleasant. For example, you have had a case of our customers coming with cockroaches and putting it in the food, then they indicate that they will not pay for that food. That's another way that customers steal from the establishment. Another way it is distributing the number of the number of drinks served or making payment with stolen checks. That is common. So you need to be careful when a check is given to you. Make sure all the details that are required when you are receiving a check is there. For example, the date, the amount should correspond in numbers and also in the word. And also the name of the person who is paying using that check. So how do the customers steal uh, now? How do the staff steal from the establishment? Has we steal from the establishment and we steal in different ways. One, overcharging for items served. We know a beer is being sold at 180, but instead of paying at 180 shillings, we, uh, we charge the customer 200 and we pocket 20 shillings. Another way it is undercharging the, the items served. For example, you know these are your friends or your family members that are coming in the establishment. Instead of charging them the right amount that you are supposed to be charged, you want to charge them because you know them. Another thing is stealing food and food and drinks or cash. For example, the beverage that we do in the kitchen, the beverage plus vanilla with the kidogo, we are not thieves but we are stealing, we are eating food. You find that a, a, a student eating a drumstick and saying that they are tasting a food. Are you really tasting food or you are supposed to use a teaspoon to test the food? So the last objective uh, of food and beverage control is data for management report. Data for management report. We need this data. When we are collecting the sales food and beverage sales, we are keeping that data. And this data will help us when we are planning for our budget. Thank you very much for listening. So in our next lesson, we are going to look at the problems of food and beverage control. Thank you.